Amen. Good morning, good morning, amen, to St. Paul, and good morning to everyone that's on Facebook, everyone that's on Band, amen, and this is a day that the Lord has made, and we should rejoice and be glad in it, amen. Today is a brighter day than yesterday. Today is another opportunity to get it right, amen, amen. We love Jesus, amen, and Jesus loves you, amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him. Amen. Hear all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Let us pray. Oh, precious Father, once again, we just want to say thank you. Lord, we thank you again for our rising up this morning. And Lord, you, Lord, led us into your house of worship one more time. Father, we know that you are still on the throne and you know everything about us. Father, we ask your Lord to anoint this service afresh. Father, let your Holy Ghost have his way, amen, in this place. That you get the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray and the people of God say amen, amen, and amen. Be favored with two selections from our praise team.
nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, hand me the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Amen. May God add a blessing to the hearers and doers of his word. Amen. Amen. We ask in our song team to please come back up. Amen. Amen. Jesus and all that he has done for me. So cry out hallelujah.
do. It ain't no way that you can think about the goodness of Jesus and not say something, not cry out hallelujah for saving you. Amen. It just ain't no way. When you look back and you think about where you've been or where you could have been and how God has brought you through and brought you over many mountains and through the valleys, then it just ain't no way. But you sit up there and meditate on God's goodness and not say, Hallelujah, somebody. Thank God for saving me. It just ain't no way. If you really know the Lord, if you really know it, the part of your sins, it just ain't no way. Amen. That she must go through that pain. The pain was 
part of the judgment of that sin pronounced upon the woman. Amen. But, but we find that the union of a man and a woman, the only thing it can do is produce a child with a sense of nature. Drive a church. That, that's the only thing that a man and woman, when we are born, we are born with a sinful nature. Amen, somebody. That's why we have to make a choice of who you're going to serve. That's why you have to choose. There's, there's a choice. You don't just fall into this thing. Amen. You have to make a, amen, a selected choice. Amen. Whether or not you're going to serve Jesus Christ. Follow the Almighty. Well, well, David tells us in Psalms 51 and 5, he said, I was shaped in iniquity and sin. And in sin did my mother conceive me. But the, I like how the New Living Translation says it. It says something like this, for I was born a sinner. Yes, from the moment of my mother conceived me in her womb, I was born a sinner. Amen. No one can take amen and say that they not, was not born a sinner. Amen. We were all born sinners. But, but, but David, when he was looking at this song, he was broken and he was agonized. He was agonizing both day and night and he was just trying, he was writing this song and he knew that he had committed adultery with Bathsheba. And because he had committed a double in Bathsheba, he kept agonizing. But day and night, he could not get no sleep. Amen. Amen. If anybody sin or anybody disobedience kept them tossing and turning all night long. And sometimes you get you just toss and you turn. I said in Bible study, I said I was I was uh, there and the night before. I believe that I was just being a little impatient with my wife. And because of that impatience, I went to work the next morning and amen and I started putting on gospel music and while I was at work and listening to the word of God and listening to different preachers and these different things and the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Say, man of God. Amen, amen. How can you get to teach and preach the word of God in a church? To teach to preach the word, amen, and yet you show the type of impatience with your wife. Hallelujah, that thing kept messing with me all day long. Amen, I couldn't wait to get home. And the first thing I, I did when I got home, I went to my wife. I told her, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. See, sometimes some things that, that, that we go through and that we do, it have us agonized. Amen. And we can't get no sleep. Amen. Sometimes we just got to go to that prayer closet. Do I have a witness? Amen. We got to find some alone time. And that's sometimes that's the best time when the Lord talks to you. It's in the middle of the night. And in the middle of the night, you go to him in your prayer closet. You get down on the knees and you just have a good talk with Jesus. Tell them all about your troubles. So, so David was broken and agonizing. Amen. And the reason he wrote this song, so he prayed. He prayed to the Lord and said, Lord, have mercy on me. But more importantly, he wanted the Lord to clean him up. He breathed down a little further. He said, give me a clean heart. Renew me a right spirit. Amen. Sometimes we need to go to the Lord and ask Him to renew a right spirit. Amen. That's the cause of our sinful nature. Amen. Our sinful nature, we get into some things sometimes. Amen. And we need to go to the Lord. Well, now, God needed somebody. Amen. He needed somebody who could conquer this flesh. He needed somebody, amen, that who knows how to overcome the sinful nature. Yeah, we find that Eve couldn't do it. Eve, when she had a son, and then her first son was a murderer. So we find out that Eve couldn't do it. Well, we look at I, 
Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They married some wives when they couldn't do it. Because the only thing that when man and woman come together is to only give another son or daughter. It means that they're going to be born into this iniquity. So something miraculous had to happen. To have a church. It had to happen and we find that with God, nothing is impossible. God's son. If you look at this word, he could not enter the same way that man did. He could not enter in a sinful state. Sometimes the supernatural. Amen. You got to learn how to touch the natural. Amen. And when you touch the natural, something begins to happen. So this, this, this is what Gabriel told Mary. He said she is not to bring a sinner into this world. But the person that she's going to bring will be someone that's holy. Hallelujah, somebody. Well, I can imagine if someone said, well, how can you be sacred in the womb? Well, how can something be holy in the womb? How can Mary bear a child without knowing a man? Well, there ain't but one answer. And that's the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. You see, the Holy Ghost has so much power that it can do all kinds of things. It can make man sit up there and think they, they mean that the things that they're seeing is not what they're seeing. Amen, because you got to have faith in believing what God can do. So we see that this young girl who has known no man will have a baby. It'll be a holy thing. And she was a call, amen, this baby, the son of God. Yeah, this birth was orchestrated by the Holy Ghost. The virgin birth was the only way that God, amen, to get that holy thing, amen, into a human family. Y'all ain't get that. That was the only way the Holy Ghost, amen, because in order for Jesus to walk this earth, in order for Jesus to experience the things that we experience, he had God himself, amen, had to be born into the flesh. Amen. And that was the way that God got him into, amen, a human family. Amen. Through the miraculous power of the Holy Ghost. Well, you might say, what is this miraculous power? How can it be? Well, we look at this writer, Luke. Luke was a doctor. And because Luke was a doctor, he had all kinds of medical experience. I believe that Luke examined every situation. He examined everything that he, amen, that, amen, to find out whether or not it was true. Amen, and he might have examined Mary, I don't know. But maybe he had some talks with some midwives. Maybe he had some talks with some doctors in that area. And the only conclusion that Luke could draw was that the Holy Ghost, Amen. Was the one, amen, that was power this conception. Amen. The Holy Ghost came upon Mary, not after the manner of men. Amen. But, amen, after the method of God's Spirit. Amen. God does not operate in the same way as man operates. God activates and creates, amen, by His Word. Amen. The way that he did it was that he covered. He overshadowed men. Amen. And now he didn't sit up there. Don't let your mind go to all of that craziness. Because the Holy Ghost cannot make with a woman. But the thing about what God did. God overshadowed the woman. And then when he overshadowed the woman. He spoke. Amen. And all the Lord had to do is speak. And he spoke it to existence. And he, because the Almighty was already right there. Well, y'all don't believe me. And I don't know if I got a witness here. But one thing that I do know is that the Lord can speak it. Amen to you. He can speak it to your existence. He can speak to that wife. 
let him in and let her know in her womb she's getting ready to have a boy or girl. But the only difference between the two, amen, is that her husband, amen, was the one that helped with the conception. But here with Mary, there was nothing but the power of the Holy Ghost. And the Lord spoke to him, amen, and told Mary what she gonna have. And that old Mary, my Lord, she might have got a little scared. Mary, because she saw the angel Gabriel. And one thing about it, we get a little fearful sometimes. When God get ready to do something in your life, uh, when he get ready to move in your life, sometimes things are just a little strange. They're out of sort. Uh, they might not be the normal thing that's going on. But soon we realize that God is doing a miraculous thing. I don't know about you, but I need the move of God to move in this place uh, and do a miraculous thing. Uh, I thank God uh, for all that he done uh, for Jesus' birth. Uh, some people call it their immaculate conception. Uh, but I know it's the power uh, of the Holy Ghost uh, that God and overshadowed Mary. Amen. And Mary was a little scared. Because Mary had not known no man. She had not even been with her husband, Joseph. How can this be? Yeah. Savior 
Amen. And be fathered by man. Because you'll be born into iniquity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But he was able. Amen. To come down. That's why Jesus was able to overcome everything. He was tempted. And he still overcame. Amen. He was tortured. And he still overcame. Amen. God can overcome in and everything. But we needed a Savior. We needed somebody. Amen. That was able to walk this earth and able to come and the Lord God Almighty set it up. He set it up. He set it up for us. Amen. And now we have a Savior. All we got to do is call on the name of Jesus. He hears your prayers. He knows all about you. He walked this earth. He knows the things that you're going through. All we got to do is call on him. Amen. The Baptist Church said about that. Christmas experience, restoration of baptism. If there's one that wants to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Now's your opportunity. Now's your opportunity if there's one. Only believe that all things are possible. Things are possible if you only live. As the choir saying, he's saying, if you only believe
that all things are possible if you only believe. Jesus was born to a virgin. Amen. And he was conceived by the Holy Ghost who spoke it into existence. All things are possible. Whatever God needs to birth in your life, amen, let the Holy Spirit, let the Holy Ghost cover you. And it will be birthed. Amen. Let the Lord get the praise, the honor, and the glory. We're living in a world where this pandemic has made a lot of weak Christians. It's made a lot of weak Christians. Who's not standing in the faith. I'm not telling you, amen, to that we should not take care and do the things that we should be doing. Amen. And keeping, keeping our social distance and wearing our mask and washing our hands and doing all of those things. We should be doing that. That's what science tells us to do. And God gives us science. Yeah. Amen. But he also gives us some faith. Yeah. And I'm not going to tell you what you should do. Just talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord about it. Talk to the Lord about it. Talk to the Lord about it. And if you can go here. And just ask the Lord, why can't I go here, but I can't come over here? Oh, do I have a church? Talk to the Lord about it. That's, that's all I'm saying. Amen. amen, amen. I'm praying the Lord continues to cover you each and every day. Because sometimes it don't be the church. You can go somewhere to the grocery store, to your job, to somebody's friend that you need, and you get a pandemic that way, you get the virus that way. It don't be the church. But you're looking at the church, amen, like it's somewhere where you cannot come. But it's not the church. We're doing everything. Safely. Yes. Amen. We pray that you have a great week. Forget, don't forget about our Bible study on Thursday at 6 p.m. Amen. We're still talking about the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. And Sister Collins, uh, that, 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 was the, that was the one that we was going in with. Amen. About the immaculate conception of the Holy Ghost. I was going in with that on Bible study. We might touch to it, but if you don't touch to it, touch on it. You got a little peace right there. Amen. God bless you. And may heaven continue to smile upon you. Let us stand. May be dismissed. May the love of God and the peace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest with you and be with these people henceforth, now, and forevermore. And let the people of God say amen. 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 And amen.